Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Jennifer J. I am uh, talking to you today about Advent. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 16. Genesis is at the very front of your Bible. You can see I'm not very many pages in. Um, and it means the beginning, so it makes sense that it's the first book. Um, Advent is such a special time. That's what we're in right now. Christians around the world celebrate Advent um, in recognition of the coming Savior, Jesus Christ, being born on Christmas Day. So um, what we do is uh, celebrate from the Sunday, the first Sunday of December through Christmas. And so I'm going to talk to you today about one of the days in my Advent Bible study that I'm doing. Um, it is on the YouVersion app. There are many of them out there. If you want to get on one, it's not too late. We're only on day five. You've still got time to catch up. Um, so this is going to be out of chapter 16, and I'm just going to read to you verses 7 and 8. No, nope, I'm going to read 7, 8, and 9. Um, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur, and he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. So let's go back then and see why has she run away and why did the angel of the Lord need to come to her and tell her to go back? So Abraham and Sarah were told that they, by God that they would have a child in their old age, right? They're, they're going to give birth to a child. And they've waited 10 years. And Sarai is like, okay, maybe, maybe God meant not me personally, but maybe my, my husband's going to have descendants through my bondwoman. Because back then, that would still be considered her children um, in that culture. So she's like, I think I can fix this. I think I can... I can figure out maybe what we're supposed to do here. And how many times do we do that, y'all? You know, sometimes people are born in a mess. They're born and they're already in a mess in their life. Um, I've fostered 58 kids. I've seen a lot of kids that have been born into a mess. Their family is a mess by choices they had no control over. They weren't even born yet. And, you know, they're born and they're addicted to drugs or whatever. They, they're born into a mess. Other people create a mess by their bad choices. And I know we all make bad choices from time to time, but some people just make, continue to make bad choice upon bad choice in their life is a mess. And so in this instance, Sarah got ahead of God, which created a mess. And I've never gotten ahead of God. Aha, uh -huh. yes I have. Um, but we do sometimes, right? We hear from God and then it seems like it's taking a long time and we think maybe we're supposed to do something instead of just waiting. Waiting can be hard. Being in the waiting room is hard. Um, but God's preparing you when you're in the waiting room. So don't rush ahead of him. But 10 years in the waiting room, Sarah had had enough. She's like, I think I'm going to figure this out. We're going to do it this way because I think that's what God means. And then it ends up causing this problem. So she is so jealous now of Hagar that she's mean to her. If you read the chapter before, you'll, you'll catch that. So she's, she's just mean to her and harsh with her. And so Sarah or Hagar runs away. She's like, I've had enough. I can't do this. And you know, when you're pregnant, if you're a woman watching this, you know, if you're pregnant, you're emotional anyway. Your hormones are bouncing everywhere. Everything's changing in your body and, and you're teary and emotional anyway. So I can imagine that, that she was probably a mess. So she runs away and she's in the desert and pregnant and alone. And an angel comes to her and says, go back. You need to go back and submit to her. And if you read the rest of that chapter, the angel tells, tells her some other things as well and makes a promise to her. But at this point, she's, she's heard now from God and God has said, you need to go back. Um, and she obeys, which is great. But what I wanna talk to you about is, first of all, you're not a mistake. You might've been born into a mess 
or you might have made some choices that have created a mess and maybe you're now in a mess in your life. But God still loves you. He still notices you. He still is there for you and wants to help you. Um, there's a name for God. It's in Hebrew called El Roy. That's E-L and then a space and then E capital E. I'm sorry, R-O-I. So E-L-R-O-I, El Roy. And it means God sees me. He sees me. He sees me. He sees you. And he knows what you're going through right now. He knows what you're going through. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. And he doesn't lie. He can't lie. So his word is true. And you can trust him. And it might seem like it's taking a really long time. Sarah had waited 10 years and she was already old when they gave her, when he gave her the promise. Now she's really old and she's starting to doubt what was told to them. But I'm, I'm just here to encourage you to hold on, just hold on because help is coming. And also I want to ask you, had, you know, Hagar felt, she was criticized and she was treated harshly um, and nobody noticed how much she was hurting. Um, you know, Abraham didn't come to her aid. It doesn't talk about any other friends or people in the community that, that came to her aid or to help her. Just, it was like it was her against Sarai and it was just a daily struggle and she didn't have the support that she needed. But have you ever been there? Or have you ever noticed someone else that might be there? I remember um, when I was in grade school and we were, we were having a special party day, something was going on, and the teacher was picking different people for things. And all day long I had, had really felt like I hadn't been noticed, like she just wasn't looking at me, she wasn't choosing me. Um, she was choosing just other people and even within the party context we were having these different games and stuff and i kept feeling like i was never being chosen and i felt just really unnoticed that day so i remember that particular day and in this story it made me think about that because i was thinking um have you ever have you ever felt unnoticed have you ever felt alone like nobody cares or have you ever seen other people that might feel that way in particular for me when i drive to church there's one particular street corner that there's a homeless person and they're holding up a cardboard sign and they're there every week and at first i just didn't look at them because it's hard to look at them and not give them money and I can't give every homeless person money. First of all, I don't have it. <laughs> but second of all, there's homeless people on every corner and I, I just can't give all of them money. Um, but to see them there and not give them money seems wrong. So it just seems easier to just like not make eye contact. And then I decided one day I might not have money to give to them, but I could smile, I could notice them, I could, I could say hello and not make them feel like they're less than, you know? And so that's what I started doing. So I go every Sunday, right? I'm there at the same time, same corner every Sunday. Um, and, and so I just smile and wave. And at first, you know, they kind of, smiled at me they kind of might do this but now they're like hey because we have this interaction every sunday and i think it really brightens their day it brightens my day um first of all i have quit feeling guilty for not being able to give them money um i say a prayer for them if sometimes the light's green and i'm just whizzing by but but many times the light is red and i just sit there and say a prayer for them so um just something to think about who do you see that seems unnoticed? It might not be a homeless person on the corner. It could be the grocery boy 
It could be um, just a person in the store. You know, another story, I was in a cemetery um, in Lawrence, Kansas one day, and there was a gentleman, older gentleman, decorating a grave. And I just decided to walk over and start talking to him. He told me all about his wife and she had died last year and this was his first, uh, it was her birthday the day he was there and it was her first birthday um, that she wasn't on this earth. And he was just sad and he, he just seemed so happy that I stopped and spoke with him. And he might have a million friends that care about him, I don't know, but he might not have any. And it just really brightened his day that I went over and spoke to him and I noticed him. And so I'm going to challenge you this week to notice someone. Um, you can notice somebody by making eye contact. You can notice someone um, by speaking to them. Say hello. Um, ask how their day is and really listen to their answer. Um, asking if you're able, asking if there's anything you can do to help. Um, you know, the gentleman at the, at the graveyard, I asked if, if I could help him, he was getting stuff out of his truck and, and he wouldn't let me help, but um, just being kind, you know, showing a kindness to someone. Um, if you don't know of anybody, uh, there might be a nursing home in your area that you could go to. There's pro if you went to the front desk and just asked, is there someone that doesn't receive visitors? There are many that don't receive visitors and it'd be great to just go sit and visit with them. Um, there are lots of volunteer opportunities, certainly at this time of year, but all year round where you can volunteer your time to um, mentor or speak with um, kids, adults, uh, mentally disabled, uh, lots and lots of, lots and lots of people that need encouragement. But, even just in your daily routine, is there someone that you can notice? And it's gonna mean a lot to them. It's gonna help them to know. So Hagar felt unnoticed, but then here comes God, sends an angel to talk to her and tell her she isn't unnoticed. And God's got this huge promise for her and for her son and for, for his generations after him. And so he, he even told her what to name the child. And so what a special time and a glorious time for her to know God sees me and God sees you. So there is something really healing in noticing people. It's very healing. It's healing, first of all, for me, because it, it makes my heart happy and happiness is good. It, it does, research has shown all the different things just smiling does to your brain and to your body um, to heal it. So it's good for it's good for us as as a healing thing when we are noticing someone, but it heals them. It heals them, um, you know, to receive a smile, to receive a compliment, um, to be noticed. So take time this week, you guys. I challenge you just take time to notice the people around you. Take time to say a prayer for them or with them, even better. And um, let me know what happens. I'd love to hear your stories. I'm, I'm excited as, as you guys are messaging me, I'm getting emails and, and messages that are letting me know what you guys are, are doing and thinking and how you're growing in your walk and even accepting Christ. I had a big praise Olivia last week with someone that accepted Christ um, after listening to the channel. So I'd love to hear from you if you uh, want to share. Um, if you want to do it in the comments, that's great too because other people can then get the um, joy of, of reading your story as well. So um, have a great Advent and I'm going to be back on Monday and talk to you guys a little bit more about Advent and what the season means and ways that you can make it special. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.